Hello guys, Didren slash Learn Swain here, and in this video I will be covering a bunch of different things. Uh, I've basically wanted to be doing, wanted to do this video for quite a while now, about a lot of things, but there weren't enough things to talk about, and now I thought, uh, let's finally talk about some stuff. So, um, first of all, uh, you may have noticed my videos haven't been coming out as much, and I haven't been working on Commodore 32 or PixoX much, and that's because I've been pretty busy with a lot of real-life stuff. And um, basically there's this uh, computer olympiad in it's a National Computer Olympiad of South Africa. And um, basically my IT teacher recommended that I join that and I did the first round and I got 100% for the first round. So that's every question perfectly correct. Uh, so, that, so that was pretty interesting. And then I did some stuff to prepare for the final round. Uh, lots of preparation, and then the final round was like a bunch of... It was spread out over a few days, and uh, it was some super interesting stuff. And it wasn't all just doing the competition. I mean, I did like 10 hours of coding. Just non-stop coding for the final round of the Olympiad. Uh, I'm a little tired of coding now. Just take a slight break of that. But yeah, we got to visit like the supercomputer, the South African supercomputers, which is super interesting. It was like, it was big, there was lots of blinking lights, and like, there were fluorescent lights overhead that were blue. It's like, why are the lights blue? We asked, and apparently, purely marketing. There is no functional purpose for the lights to be blue other than just looking cool. So that, that was rather interesting. And uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, I did the final round after lots of preparation, which of course means I couldn't work on other stuff. And I got bronze. I got a little bronze medal here. As you can see. Uh, you can see programming, learn to wait, you can really see very well, let me turn on the lights. And wait for the camera to adjust. There you can kind of see. My name. It's engraved at the bottom. So yeah, I got this medal from the Institute of IT Professionals South Africa, the programming Olympiad. So yeah, uh, they didn't tell me what position I came in, they just told me I came bronze, but apparently I was the best in Western Cape, which is the area in South Africa where I live. Uh, I'm not sure about that yet, but that's from what I've heard from the people who handle the certificates and stuff. It's not official yet, I think, but yeah, good to know. So apparently I'm a very good programmer. Yeah, probably from my work on LOS and PixOS and the Commodore 32. And by the way, talking about PixOS, the guy who's paying me to make that um, also paid for a logic analyzer. A Sele, 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 I can't pronounce that. That, this, this name, and the light is now too bright. I'm going to turn it off again. Wait for it to adjust. Now it's too dark. Eh, problems. But yes, it came in this super awesome card case, and it's got the name on here as well, which you can't really see because, again, it's too dark. You can kind of see the lettering on there. Um, it's like a super professional logic analyzer model thing. It even came with this little piece of paper. Thank you for your awesomeness. And then what I presume is the people who worked on it, and then there's some instructions on how to install the software. And it also came with this poster, which doesn't fit on the camera, but it's basically of someone who worked on the Apollo 11 program, I think. I don't remember his name. Uh, kind of famous dude. He says Sally at the bottom as well. Uh, yeah, he was an engineer on Apollo 11 program. It's awesome. Free poster. And let me just show you the actual logic analyzer. It's this little red box. It's got a little line on it. Shows that it's on. You can change colors. Connect your logic probes in here. Connect this to your computer. Got a little USB cable in here. And you've got little probe hook wires in here. I'm not going to take it all out. But yeah, you got hooks like this. You just got a little teeny tiny little gripper thingy at the end. You can't see it because the camera's not focusing. 
but basically you'd connect that to some electronic thingamajig and you'd use this thing to find out how it works which is super useful and uh, can be used for debugging, reverse engineering uh, stuff like that just seeing if everything's working correctly and improving things and just learning how stuff works so that's super interesting, it's gonna be so much fun to play around with that of course I have some slight experience in reverse engineering which is from this old thing if you remember this, I've done quite a few videos on these exchange rate signs which I got from the flea market the local flea, mar flea market, I have four of these, two large, two small, this is the large one but you can't really see it, whole thing so yeah, it would be useful in things like this, and of course working on PixOS, making sure that the protocols are going as fast as possible. So yeah, that's awesome. Other stuff I got from the flea market, I got some really random stuff, and some really awesome random stuff. Um, one of those things, I'm just talking about everything by the way, uh, is this, a Texas Instruments TI-89 Titanium. This is a super good calculator. This is like one of the best calculators you can get. It isn't the best calculator you can get, but it's TI, which is a pretty good name. And um, I got this for like a bargain price. I got this cheaper than a normal scientific calculator. The dude thought it was like an ordinary scientific calculator like this one. Just turn it on, you can enter like square root of 5, and you know, you that's about as fancy as it gets. You have like third form output and stuff, and you can you got pretty print as well on this. As well. But this is a proper programmable calculator, which is super fancy. You can like enter an equation. It's, let me turn the light back on. Perhaps you can see it better. Uh, you can enter an equation, have x in it, and then you can say solve for x, and then it'll tell you what the value of x is. You can enter trinomials. You can do all sorts of cool stuff on this thing. It is super powerful. You can enter any math equation and it will just solve it. And of course it's also a graphing calculator, so as you can imagine, it can draw graphs of things, it can draw equations, parabolas, whatever. And yeah. I got a bunch of programs on here. I've got let me take it up. I've got Tetris because I like to have Tetris on all my devices. And yeah, works as you would expect. You can turn pieces and you know stack them on top of each other. I don't think I bother playing now. But yeah. And I've also got another game on here, Kalkroj. If you have a TI-89 or a calculator that supports it, I'm not sure how many calculators it's on, get Kalkroj, because it is awesome and it's super addictive. It's a rod like for a calculator. It's just it's the best game ever <laughs> for the calculator anyway. Um, it's got a little I.O. port at the top here which I found pretty interesting and uh, I want to kind of use the logic analyzer it got to reverse engineer the protocol. I got a little audio connector. It's just your standard audio connector pops right into there. And uh, it's also got a USB port for uploading programs and stuff. But yeah, I want to reverse engineer that perhaps connected to a thermal printer so it can be a graph uh, printing calculator as well. So that would be interesting. Some other stuff I got from flea market include this thing which is a coin acceptor. Put the coin in there and it comes out here if it's the right coin and if it's the wrong coin it comes out this little rejection stop. And if it gets jammed you got this little lever and you've got some patrol logic. Super interesting to see how this thing works as well and uh, as a reference coin you put in here which is basically the coin that it compares all the other coins to um, this is actually really interesting, I can't describe how it works but just looking at this while it's in operation is very interesting to see how the thing like accepts coins, how it deals with gems and stuff as it's jammed now because there's no reference coin but I just took out the reference coin. So it's probably very confused. But yeah, that's very interesting. I should probably do a video on how that works because there's a lot of interesting stuff inside here. There's like stuff to prevent the 
coin on a string trick I found. Some very interesting prevention measures to prevent that from actually working and uh, stuff. So yeah. Um, other stuff I got from the market that I can't show include an old computer which I've sold on uh, some retro computer form. So very interesting super old hardware. Uh, unfortunately I couldn't use it myself because I found out I need a fancy power supply, I need a really old disk drive that uses like a port before IDE ports existed. Um, I'd need like all this old stuff, I need a floppy drive with like a copy of Windows, Microsoft DOS. Uh, I need all this stuff to get it to just boots. Meanwhile I could just use an emulator. I'm like, I understand why you'd want the physical hardware, but I'm fine with just using an emulator for my retro hardware stuff. Because that's that old retro stuff is super expensive. So it was better for me to just sell it to someone who knew what they were doing and who actually had a use for it. And that money, along with the prize money I got from the Computer Olympiad, which was like 2,000 Rand and 1,000 Rand to put towards a book about algorithms. By the way, if you have a recommendation for a book about algorithms, preferably like Java algorithms and stuff, or a book about learning C++, would be nice. I don't know um, university level algebra yet, so... or calculus. So don't recommend me a book with that because I've read those books before and I just get lost because it refers to all this complicated math stuff that I don't understand yet. And I'd be willing to learn but I don't want to be learning, reading a book about calculus while, just so I can understand a book about programming, if that makes sense. So yeah, there's that. Um, there's I also got a barcode scanner and a thermal receipt printer. The thermal receipt printer was broken. The barcode scanner was only half broken from the flea market as well. Also dirt cheap. And um, I'm basically using that to make a library system for the school. Because they're now paying me to make a library... well, they're not paying me for a library system, yes. Um, that's for a PAT project for school. And there's someone who wants to pay me at school also to run the tuck shop system. Because during the market day, which is like this day where all the classes compete and sell stuff, uh, to try and see who can sell the most stuff. It's complicated to explain. I did the management system for that and using an old thermal printer I basically printed out these little uh, barcodes. This particular strip of barcodes was from a system malfunction where I accidentally printed 43 cake slice barcodes instead of 4. <laughs> As you can see a lot of paste wasted thermal paper but luckily thermal paper is super cheap so that doesn't matter that much. But yeah, I made that system, he was super interested in it, and he wants me to do that for the school's tuck shop system. So, uh, excited to see where that's going to go. And uh, finally, not sure if I mentioned this already, but I'm putting all this money that I got from the Olympiad and the old computer that I sold, I'm putting that towards a 3D printer, a PrinterBot Simple kit, maker's kit, not the metal one. Because uh, I've always wanted a 3D printer, but they've been super expensive, and uh, like, I don't know, I haven't found much of a use for them until I learned how to design my own models. Because, like, I sure I can go in Thingiverse and download other people's models, but when, if I have a 3D printer, I want to be able to design my own models. And uh, I tried SketchUp, and SketchUp, sure, it's super easy to use, but. If you want to do anything that isn't made out of squares and cubes and stuff like that, SketchUp becomes super annoying to use because I still cannot figure out how to make a sphere on that thing. It's like I can make cylinders kind of. I can't do anything on the surface of those cylinders without messing everything up. But it's like it just gets finicky. The easy to useness of it gets super finicky and all the other programs were way too hard for me to use and I'm not an artist so I can't draw in 3D and then I discovered OpenSCAD open source so I don't even remember what it stands for but basically you can um, make shapes and stuff with code you basically write a program like thing that generates shapes and um, the program just renders them it's hard to explain but 
it's basically a programming language dedicated to drawing or generating shapes and stuff and because I'm a programmer that is super useful to me it's just like wow I just discovered how to design 3D stuff and I'm actually reasonably good at it well I'd just say myself uh, it's much easier to use than Google SketchUp anyway I'm much better at it than Google SketchUp and um, yeah I can do stuff with that so now I can finally convince myself to get a 3D printer and it's good so I get to assemble it myself which is going to be super fun and it's already shipped it's should arrive in like a week or two so that'll be exciting and I'll probably make some videos to demonstrating that so yeah um, I'm not quite sure what I should post in the meantime for videos I'm thinking of doing a review of perhaps this logic analyzer showing you what it does showing you how it works and the same thing with this not this uh, coin acceptor not much as a review more of a demonstration of how the mechanics work. Now, I'm not a professional in this, but just seeing how this works, like this little magnetic clip thingy. Now it's got little teeth here, which are to prevent the coin the string thing, and you've got the rejection system, how that moves, and some of the redundancy stuff. Pretty interesting stuff. Um, perhaps I can do a video on that. Tell me if you would be interested in that. Oh, and finally, um, Netram, which is a local, I'm trying to block the light on my phone, it's not working out very well. Uh, Netram, which was a local electronics store, it still is a local electronics store, was based in Durban, and they've moved to Cape Town, which is where I live, so they're nearby, which is super awesome. Uh, basically, when they moved, I was kind of worried, I thought they might have gone out of business or something, they're having a clearance sale, apparently it was so that they could move to Cape Town easier, they don't need it whole as much stuff. And some stuff was like super cheap, so I bought some stuff. I bought this uh, rover base thing because, as you may have noticed, my previous robots were all made with like a plastic bottle as the caster wheel because I am not good at designing anything mechanically structured, as you can still see. But yeah, I bought some servos, I bought this uh, motor controller, I bought a little PCB thing, and I soldered some stuff together, and I got this little robot. And this base is actually super cool because it's got rotary encoders on all four motors, and it's got four motors, of course, and the tank treads, and tank treads are awesome. So that's pretty awesome. And also another thing we got is a CMU Cam 4, which is a little camera module over here. We've got computer vision, so we can see things. This is not. These are not the actual eyes, these are sonar sensors, as lots of people seem to be con getting confused. This just measures distance. And we've got two degrees of freedom over here, so we can move up, down, left, right, pan and tilt, as they're called. And we've got lots of batteries. Over here, over here. These two are for the motors. This one's for the control logic. Down there we've got um, two buck regulators, you can't really see. This one, another one over there. One is to regulate power the 9 volt battery to 5 volts, the logic, and then this one is to convert this power into something that the servos can use. And there's unregulated power going to the DC motors, which doesn't really need to be regulated because they're big, powerful DC motors. Um, and yeah, I can't show it to you working, unfortunately, because the batteries are all uh, missing. It's I don't have them here, and also it's on the desk, and it would take too long. And uh, also, yeah, we got a movable socket for the chip. Something I just thought would be cool to have. And uh, yeah, the rest is just some control logic. Nothing too interesting. We got a little expansion port here for adding more stuff. But uh, that's it. Nah, I can't block the light without blocking the camera. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, hope it was interesting. And 